Accounts Payable, Part 2. Account Payable, the sum owed by a business for services or goods received. It's a promise to pay a supplier for those goods or services. It's the most common liability to a physician's office. Payments are made by check, and it includes medical and office supplies, equipment, the salaries of the employees, and any other services. When something comes to you, it should have a packing slip, which has the items purchased and the cost. Check it against your invoice, which serves as a bill. The statement is the request for a payment or the bill. Note any discounts for early payment. You want to staple the, packet, the packing slip or purchase order to the packing slip and the invoice. Check statements against the invoice for any errors. File in a tickler file to ensure that it has timely payment. Write the check number and the amount that you paid on the invoice and place it in the file for accounts to be paid. Computerized systems have accounts payable systems that have a check register that records all checks written and categorizes them into separate columns, such as rent, insurance, office supplies, utilities, and so forth. The pegboard system also has a check register page. The check register page should be verified with the bank statement. The accounting function a system of monitoring the financial status of a facility. Financial accounting, this provides information to outside agencies. Managerial accounting enables more efficient internal management. And then a cost accounting determines the practice costs. Cost analysis determines the cost of a service. Fixed costs do not vary, variable costs in proportion to the patient volume. So if you have more of a patient volume, maybe your cost of a procedure may go down a little bit if you have more of an influx of patients versus if you have a smaller amount. Income statement. Two of the most common statements in the ambulatory care setting is an income and expenses. The most commonly generated year-end report. Items are patient income, outside revenue sources, overhead expenses, employees and physician compensation and benefits. Balance sheet has basic accounting elements, debit, increases worth, credit, decreases your assets. Debit entries must equal credit entries. Items included on the ledger or the journal. Ratios highlight financial characteristics. An accrual basis is income at the time charges are generated. Cash basis is income recognized when money is collected. Accounts receivable ratio is a formula that measures the speed in which outstanding accounts are paid. The accounts receivable ratio provides a picture of the state of the collection and probable losses. The longer an account is past due, the less likely of successfully making the collection. The goal is a two month turnaround time. The formula is your total accounts receivable divided by your monthly receipts. That should equal your turnaround time. A collection ratio is the percentage of outstanding debts collected. Your total goal should be 90% collection ratio. The formula is your total receipts divided by your total charges should equal a percentage. After your when you use when you do your total charges, it should be the ratio after any adjustments. So those adjustments should be taken off as well. The cost ratio is the cost of a procedure or a service. This can help you the cost ratio is the cost of a procedure or a service. 
It can help you determine the cost effectiveness of that service. The formula is the total expense of the service divided by the total number of procedures for one month. If your office finds that the expense of doing a procedure is too expensive, they may have to discontinue doing that service. Expenses of the ambulatory clinic. You have overhead costs. These are such things as rent, electricity. You have accounts payable. Those are things as your equipment, your supplies that you need. Then there's payroll. You have W-4s, you have salary calculations, withholding taxes, social security calculations, utilization reviews, legal and ethical guidelines. An accountant and a physician conduct audits. They should do this. There's separate duties among several employees. There should be one person to use the signature stamp. This is important. You don't want to have too many people using the signature stamp. There should be a signature card at the bank of authorization check signers. And seek employees with honest traits. Another recommended step to take for ensuring the safety of your financial and ethical guidelines of your office would be bonding your employees. What this does is it reimburses the practice for any monetary losses. The cost of bonding is worth the protection. There's three types of bond. You have a position scheduled bond. This covers the position rather than a specific individual. For instance, the bookkeeper, office manager, and receptionist might be, might be covered. A blanket position bond covers all employees. If a staff member often shares duties, it covers for one another when there are absences or work really well when a team is doing their business together. And then a personal bond is designed to cover a specific individual by name and generally requires a personal background investigation.